Hello and welcome to the next in our series of the Alshech HaKadosh, Gems of the Alshech, uh, which we're working through all of the centers of the Parshas of the Torah, um, taking a gem from each center from the, the wonderful and holy Alshech. Um, we're up to the center of Matos. Um, Matos is very dramatic, it's a continuation of the drama of the, uh, that we just read about in the previous Parsha that uh, led Pinchas to stop the plague that had broken out am amongst the Jewish people. Uh, as a consequence of the actions they took in becoming involved in idolatry with the Midianites and the Moabites. And that's where we're up to. Now we're coming to the end of Moses' life, and God says, uh, you've got one other thing to do. You've got to appoint an army. We're going to go and fight against the Midianim, who were the people who hatched the plot to uh, destroy the Jewish people, or have the Jewish people destroyed by God, if you remember from our, our previous um, uh, podcast or video, whatever we're doing. Um, so, here is the, the moment of that. So if we, again, if we, if we grab hold of our uh, art school Kumish, and it's in chapter 31 of the Midbar, and it's uh, verse 1, Mamad Aleph. Yudab HaShem, much more, God speaks to Moshe, and he says, Nakayim Nikmas B'nei Yisrael and Esa B'gyonim. Go and fight a war of vengeance um, uh, against the Midianites, the instigators of the plot, remember who caused the deaths of 24,000 Jews, and afterwards you will be gathered, you will be praises, you will be gathered to your people and they will pass away. Moshe speaks to the people tomorrow, I need, I need uh, volunteers for, for the army. And off they go. And how many from each and every one of them? Uh, well, there are 12 tribes. Each tribe had to supply a thousand soldiers um, and Pinchas, and off they go and fight this war. And the Alshach says that's very strange. So let me read to you what the Alshach says here. Shemot Tavar, maybe you'll say, Lama lo sholak yis and nishtayim esa elif. Why don't they send a bigger army, bigger than twelve thousand? Maybe you'll say that. I would definitely say that. After all, there is. I mean, the Jewish people at this stage is about three million, um, and the Midianites are a very large people. So such a small, I mean, this is just a, a strike force. This is not you know, a major campaign. Well, it is a major campaign, but surely it's undermanned. Uh, I think it could send more than 12,000. So why does it send 12,000? Um, before then, there is there's this double expression. Um, it's a double expression I'm sure you noted about when I read it. Venge war of vengeance on behalf of the Jewish people. Two expressions. So really there's an answer which links both of these in a very interesting insight into what the Jewish people are all about. The Asher says the reason that they are going to fight with such few is people because they don't really need to actually fight and they're not going to fight. There's going to be a miracle. They have to make the first steps towards the war happening. You mustn't rely on a miracle. You have to show you're willing to do something. But that usually or can provoke uh, a miraculous, a heavenly intervention to fulfill what you wanted to do without actually having to well, get your fingers dirty, or in this case, bloody, uh, to engage in the battle. The, the verse says, This is uh, verse 6 in, in chapter 31. And Moshe sends them, a thousand for each tribe, the tzorah, uh, to the army, Ata Itom Ves Pinchus, with them and Pinchus. The Alshah says that joins Pimkus to the soldiers. Now Pimkus is a great Sabbath. The way that they're going to fight is miraculously, but miracles don't happen to ordinary people like me. It only happens to great Sadiqim to really saintly, very, very special people. In other words, the army was so small because they're going to fight miraculously, and it was the very best, the elite, the spiritual elite um, of, of the army were going out to fight. Uh, I would suppose there'd be a bunch of old men with grey hair, looking at my reflection here, I suppose I have that as well, but with long white beards, and yet they're going to succeed. That's the point. If we think back to what the Midianites did, there's a tremendously interesting thing, which I don't think I shared with you before, and again, it's the Alsha. So you remember that what happens is the Jewish people come to a place called Shittim, um, which was uh, at the end of the Sedra of Bullock. Bullock has been unsuccessful in cursing the Jewish people, uh, God doesn't allow that to happen. But he's very clever and he really hates us big time. So he realizes there is another way to get the Jewish people in trouble. 
and that is if he can disconnect God from us, or rather have us disconnect uh, ourselves from God. And he knows that God doesn't, doesn't approve of sexual immorality, and that's his plot. So let me just read that. The Yeshiv, now listen carefully, it's very interesting. Again, it's the Alshik. This is back to uh, the Sefer of Bollocks in chapter 25. Verse 1. The Yeshiv is from the Shittim. The Jewish people come to the place of Shittim. The Yochel Om is nice, Elvin is smart. The people began to engage in sexual immorality with the Moabite women. <coughs> and they, they invited the people to their feasts and they started eating kosher food. And then it goes on to say, the Yochel Om is not let them. They ate and then they bowed down to their gods. And the next verse is the Yitzom of Yisrael and Baal Pahor, and then Yisrael gets involved in a particularly disgusting form of idolatry called Baal Pahor. The Yichar Hashem Yisrael, and God's anger is, is burns fiercely against Yisrael. So the Alshuk says something very interesting. In the beginning, in the first verse, what went on provokes no response from heaven whatsoever. It to Kronel Am Zivka the Hem, and the people bowed down to their gods. Nothing. The Yochel Am, and the people, um, eat their stuff and do and do all sorts of uh, sexual immorality. Why no reaction? So the Alshu points out that in this case, in verse 1 and 2, it refers to the Jews as the Om. It's the ordinary people, the people who didn't know better. But the people who do know better are referred to as the Shrol. When the Shrol get involved in this, the people who should and do know better get involved in this stuff, then God is very angry. The plot is to disconnect the Jewish people from God. That makes them vulnerable. Now, if the Jewish people are going to succeed, and they are numerically, we always numerically small, if we're going to succeed against the world who hates us, then it has to be that you have to have God on our side. To have God on your side, you have to, as it were, keep the rules that keeps God on our side. Balaam's brilliant plan was to disconnect us from God, and he nearly succeeds. And then Pincus acts, fine. Now there's a war of vengeance. To show this underlying strength of the Jewish people, it's only 12,000. 12,000 old rabbis with long white beards were going out to fight against the people. And like, do me a favour, this is insanity. Young men, strong men, you've trained, commandos. Uh, no, not at all. Because the Jewish people are not going to fight in a natural way, which would require natural training and, and physical stamina and all that stuff. No, they're going to fight in a supernatural way. They're going to be an army of Pinchases, uh, of very highly spiritually uh, attuned people. Now, and here is an important, very important message from the al -Shah. The success of the Jewish people, it doesn't depend on our strategy um, and our weapons and our innovations in the battlefield and technology. Ultimately, it depends on our relationship with God, because as it says, or as we sang after the splitting of the Red Sea, Hashem is Rochom Hashem Shemar. God is a God of war. He decides who wins. History is full of unexpected victories by tiny armies um, over much greater overwhelming ones. Uh, one can think obviously of the um, the Spartans, of the, of the, the 300 Spartans of the Battle of Thermopylae. Um, one can think, being Scottish, of the Battle of Bannockburn, a small Scottish army routing a larger English one. In America, like, it's, it's uh, well worthy, worth thinking about the Vietnam War when a hugely superior um, force, army, in the United States was defeated, was defeated by a much smaller Vietnamese army. And God decides who wins battles. It's not a question of tactics, it's not a question of numbers. The Jewish perspective, therefore, is we're going to succeed, if we're going to succeed, by connection to God. This is an, a, a, an action, this is a war against people who try to disconnect us from Hashem. That's a war worth fighting. Not worth fighting.